Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. It's the issue in the southeastern region of the country where uh, the clash between the members of IPOB and uh, military officers is, uh, is running into what has become a curfew now um, declared by the governor of Abia State. I have with me in the studio Professor Banji Akinto, a historian, elder state man, and also a legal practitioner, Mr. Kechiku Ikeja, a regular analyst here on China's television, and Mr. Dafe Akweda, a senior advocate of Nigeria, who's been talking to us uh, from uh, downtown Lagos. Let's continue with the conversation right now. Um, Professor, from the dimension that we've seen this issue now, it's turned into an issue in River State where there is a clash now. People are said to have been killed in uh, something uh, somewhat a reprisal. What do you think should be the immediate action of government on this issue? The federal government of Nigeria under President Buhari owes us the duty now to uh, bring this growing tension to some, to begin to dampen, to begin to douse the tension and return our country to orderliness and peace. I don't think that he owes us the duty now of suppressing anybody. I don't think that that is the road, the road to, do, to go. Do you think it's, I a, think it's the a road case of to suppressing go. anybody or is it just a, a, an activity of the military? That is, oh well, the military doesn't act unless the president of Nigeria commands them to act. Don't let us make a people, people think that the military is some sort of entity that can just go on and and do its work? No, it's not like policemen in the streets. When policemen in the streets see a crime being committed, they don't need to go and ask the governor or the president or anybody. They act immediately. The military is not like that. The military does not move unless the president of Nigeria orders them to move. And so they are going to the east or going to the south, south, south earlier on, uh, is entirely a product of an order from the president of Nigeria. So don't let us, don't let us begin to talk of the military as if they are some independent entity. Would you say that the military is that not an independent entity in any country? Would you say that Operation Python Dance should uh, that operation should be called off? I think the president needs to look at it. And if I was sitting in front of him, I would say, Mr. President, call this thing off and lead us through peaceful means towards a resolution of the problems of our country. And we can achieve peace. Right. Uh, you asked the question earlier on, how do you think uh, the president can do this? And the president has, uh, the president's uh, office uh, did say about two weeks ago, oh, the president cannot just dictate uh, uh, restructuring to Nigeria and so on. Yes, that's true. But the president can guide Nigeria along the path to, to, to restructuring. When you have come to a point in the life of a country that from all imaginable angles, a request is being made for a particular step, it is incumbent on the rulers of the country to look at it carefully and to attend to it and not treat it as if it doesn't exist. Okay. We saw this example, this type of situation in India. After the secession of Pakistan and Bangladesh, the, there were other nationalities in India that wanted to secede also. And a lot of people who didn't want India to break up then began to demand okay. uh, the prof, restructuring of the federal okay, government. You the will country. explain to us because that restructuring has become like a cliche, but let me allow uh, uh, Mr. Ikechuku Ikeji to come in uh, on, on this one. Legally speaking now, the role of the army and in a civil environment like this, uh, what do you think should be happening in terms of what the police should be doing and uh, what the army should be doing and what exactly happened to not not casting blames this time around? No, no. But there's no way you would speak without um, apportioning blames in this scenario. There is no reason for the military to enter into Abia oh. State at all. There is no, the, the there's no breakdown of public order or uh, security that the police cannot handle. You can, you are a journalist, you can testify to that. If you look at Section 217 of the Constitution, it lists certain um, 
functions of the military, of the army and the other um, arms, of the, arms of the military. In doing that, it says that the, the, the president can uh, decide the operational use of them according to an act by the National Assembly. And the National Assembly has made an act, the Armed Forces um, Decree, the Armed Forces Now and Act, 1993, under which the operational use of the army will be for the maintenance of public order and public safety and public um, security. So the question is, was there any apparent, ostensible, clear, unambiguous, or undebatable breakdown of law and order? Or that's it, that's, it, that's in the constitution or did they talk about when there is a situation of insurrection? Where is, this an, is there an insurrection? Insurrection means simply raising a different opposition force against the state. Yeah. That is insurrection. There is no insurrection. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Dafi Akwede, uh, uh, as it stands right now, you were sounding a word of caution uh, right now. If we will learn from our history and going forward, the agitation seems to be uh, multifaceted right now. What would you say we should be doing right now? Okay. Hello and a warm welcome to News Across Nigeria. I'm Melinda Akinami. On the program today, Nigerian Army defeats a large number of Boko Haram terrorists, recovers more weapons. The executive secretary of the Victim Support Fund says more money is needed for the reconstruction of the Northeast. And the federal government begins work on the Lafia Makodi Highway. We we'll begin with security matters. The Nigerian Army authorities say troops on Operation Lafia Dole have successfully disarmed a large number of Boko Haram terrorists following an ambush along Bama Road, which is in Bornu State. In a statement, the Director, Army Public Relations Office, Brigadier General Sani Usman, explained that soldiers from 151 Battalion, 21 Brigade of the Nigerian Army intercepted the terrorists in the early hours of yesterday. According to the Army spokesman, several of the insurgents were killed while others sustained gunshot wounds. The troops also recovered an AK-47 rifle and magazine, 60 rounds of 7.62 mm ammunition, three bicycles, a machete and some cash, amongst other items. Following a spate of renewed Boko Haram attacks in the northeast, the army has received marching orders to step up operations against the insurgents with a mandate to capture their leader, Abubakar Shekau. And still on security matters, but this time in Abia State, where the defense headquarters has been reacting to yesterday's clash between the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, and the army in the state capital. The Director of Defense Information, Major General John Eninche, who was on our breakfast show, Sunrise Daily, dismissed the claim that the Army was test driving their armored personnel carrier and, online, and has asked online platforms to stop feeding the public with false information. The troops were just on their normal operation, patrolling. And uh, some chaps, if I will use that, who were later identified to be IPOP members, came to, I mean, block the road and said they shouldn't pass. How? And they denied the masses. And it was peaceful. And they started throwing stones at them. Missiles. I mean, when I mean missiles, stones and things that are hard objects, to the extent of, you know, injuring a soldier on his head. And then they passed out by one lady. And that was what happened. Mm. And of course, it did not even uh, escalate to what they pasted on the internet. When they positioned, uh, they went and photoshopped a picture of people that were in a range, range-like position, and then firing against uh, IPOP flags. It is rather unfortunate. I was contacted directly 
and I was in touch with them, and that is what is the situation. You know when things like this happen, people can come up with various things. I'm not saying that the police did not give you, uh, you know, a version of what they understood or what they were giving, but I'm now telling that what happened is that it is a normal, like you referred me to Operation Python Dance, I mean SS Python Dance, it's a normal routine SSS. And of course, nobody will just sit down and then, you know, look at, uh, you know, uh, it not carry out your normal SSS, which was the normal SSS of Python Dance. Mm. And that was what happened. So it was not like specifically we are testing a, a armor personnel carrier or whatever. We didn't just acquire armor personnel carriers. We have it and we have been using them. So it was not if it was something expected and uh, you, know, you know, looked at from that angle, they would have gone out to their combat camera and captured it. Joining us from Abia State to discuss more on this issue is the State Commissioner of Police, Olaleye Oyebode. Thank you so much for joining us on News Across Nigeria. Thank you so much. Can you tell us what happened between the army and IPOV in your state? Now, let me say that we have gone far from that. For now, we've been able to restore peace. And I think that is what is really important. Uh, the incident, we have put it behind us. The activities of the IPB members, we have been monitoring them, and with what we are doing now, is only to sustain and maintain the peace that we've been able to enjoy so far. So it's a matter of ensuring that no organization comes to take the law into its hands, and that is what we are doing taking the environment as serious for everybody to be able to go about their lawful business, even when they did the sit-at-home uh, um, uh, incident, the matured way the police were able to look into the matter really went to ensure that there was no breach of the peace. And that was what happened yesterday. We've been able to calm down, frame nerves, the people injured, they were brought into our police clinic, they were treated and discharged. One civilian woman with minor injury, one other corporal from the police, and one corporal from the military. And all is over. The, in, in the important thing is I want to assure all Abians and all those that are resident in, uh, in Umuagia to go about their lawful businesses. And I think that is the most important thing. We are here to protect life and property. That is the instruction from the Inspector General of Police. Thank you. Well, could this invasion be related to the Army's announcement of the deployment of troops to the region for a special operation it called Operation Python Dance 2? There is no time police and uh, the military will not always have uh, such a, a pro pro program. We work together. Mind you, especially in Abia State here, we are always in synergy with other CISA agencies. And this is not the first time we are collaborating and working together. The main thing is we always go on patrol. And when we're going on patrol, that incident happened. And I've told you that I've been able to curtail the excesses of those that want to hijack it uh, and make it another thing. We've been able to sustain the tempo of peace. And I want to say that that much we'll be able to do. All officers and men of the command are on their toes and we are ready to sustain the temple to ensure that peace that we're able to put in place is not troubled. Thank you. But we're getting reports that there may be more clashes if the soldiers involved in yesterday's violence are not punished. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. That, that is for the military to, uh, to look into. My, the police, we, we have dominated the area. We have been able to show the, the, the environment is very peaceful. Whoever uh, wants to talk about punishing, I, I think that is done within my purview. My own take is that the area that we are talking about has been well curtailed. The incident has been put behind us. And we are moving on to ensure that even from now to December and, and beyond that, that uh, the peace that we have been enjoying is not truncated. Thank you. Thank you so much, the Abia State Commissioner of Police, Mr. Olaya 
Oyebadi. And still on security matters, but this time in a river state where the man suspected to have raped and killed an eight-year-old girl in Port Harcourt, Ifa Indike, has been brought back to the river state capital where he allegedly committed a crime. The University of Port Harcourt student had escaped from custody of the River State Police Command and fled to Jos, the Plateau State Capital, where he was rearrested last week. He was sighted sitting in a white bus surrounded by security officials and a crowd of interested persons trying to catch a glimpse of him. He's perhaps the most wanted suspected criminal in the state, with the police apparently not taking any chances this time around and vowing to ensure the suspect is kept under lock and key before he faces the law. A total of 1,100 pump action rifles loaded in a 20-foot container have been recovered by the men of the Customs Service in Lagos State. The operatives of the Tinkan Island Command of the Service said they caught a syndicate that specialized in smuggling weapons into the country. They add that the rifles were concealed in a container labeled as wash hand basins. A similar seizure was made by the Customs in January this year. And when we return on the program, we look at efforts at rebuilding the Northeast. I'll give you more details in a moment. Join us again.